Hi everyone, this is Nora and I'm back with another video on Egyptian cultural appropriation. Why Egyptians are so mad about the Netflix series Cleopatra. I go more in depth and this time I'm gonna go even further and talk about how to make it right. First of all, I want to thank you guys. Thank you so much. I got so many comments from people around the world. All of them saying that they support us. In my first video, I was very mad. I was really angry because I feel like I was a little bit aggressive you know what i mean that's why i wanted to come up here and make another video right now i'm calm you know <laughs> very calm right now and uh, after seeing a lot of the support from you guys in the comments it made me feel like okay this is not the end of the world it's a very small group of people that think and act in this way it's not the whole world and it's not all of the states and it's certainly not all of afro-americans or african-americans afro-americans what i don't know if that's a word uh, so many different comments so many african-americans oh, we don't agree with this this is stupid and now i see it and now i feel like okay nora you shouldn't fight hate with hate you should fight hate with information so instead of fighting hate with hate i'm going to educate a lot of the people that believe this uninformed and they heard a few things that made them feel like wow you know this amazing culture could be mine only the sheep follow blindly but intelligent people will not just hear an opinion online like from people like freaking kevin hart the funniest thing kevin hart said is that he's a real pharaoh coming up here and talking about history of a country that he's never been to um, like when egyptians have a comedian he has a medical degree first of all i'm gonna talk to you more in depth this time on why egyptians are so enraged about the netflix cleopatra documentary I want you guys to understand that this has been brewing for a really long time the afrocentric movement has been trying to claim our history as their own for a very long time They've been appropriating our culture for many years and as you can see in some of these pictures a lot of these celebrities are wearing eye of horus necklaces and nefertiti head and you know doing these tattoos and wearing these ancient egyptian clothes okay and while all of this does not bother us like even when foreigners come to our country we dress them up like that get it like you want to be cool like egyptians we get it we understand but what gets us the most themselves the afrocentric go one step further by claiming that they are the real pharaohs and they're the ones that build the pyramids and we are nothing but invaders imposters fakers jada's documentary is aimed at reinforcing the afrocentric ideology that black people in america own egyptian history and egyptian culture it's not about that the actress is black and we don't like black we're racist this is about writing our history to make it into someone else's history basically this is basically conquering our country without going to physical war with it it's colonizing us colonizing egyptian heritage and egyptian culture and history somebody actually wrote a comment on that uh that really caught my attention it's a quote I got a lot of comments saying that hey this girl is black anyway the actress and her are not different at why can't they play egyptians when you know the skin tone is uh, the same and i want to say again that skin color is not the indicator at all features face like face structure and i can guarantee you that this actress if she comes to egypt people will be able to tell that she's not an egyptian and if she goes to greece people will be able to tell that she's not a greek it doesn't matter how light her skin tone is again these us-based like fixation on skin tone does not work out in the outside world and i don't really have any personal problem with the main actress like i think that she's really beautiful I'm pretty sure she's very talented what i have a problem with is the documentary is false in all different types of ways like first of all not a single egyptian on site on the cast or behind the scenes funny right because this is a documentary about egyptian history but you didn't have one single egyptian include us there was only a shred of an egyptologist that you had on board on their team he would really correct a lot of the stuff that is wrong with this documentary aesthetics uh, the clothes 
Also, the fact that they're showing her as a warrior queen. If you look at history, you never heard of any warrior queens in Egypt. The queens don't fight the wars. The wars are fought by their armies. That's also very weird. They did not even read one single paper done on her. They basically just made up everything. Then you get all these people calling us racist for this. Another thing that I want to touch on is a lot of comments are talking about you, you people are never mad about whitewashing. We are mad about whitewashing. Whitewashing happened in Elizabeth Taylor uh, Cleopatra. People were very angry and the government banned the movie in Egypt. And a lot of people are saying like Cleopatra was Greek and she was white. And I, again, I'm saying that you're talking out of that mentality that skin tone defines you. There are different types of Europeans, just as there's different types of Africans. A lot of Greek people said that in the comments too. Greeks think of themselves as Mediterranean. But they themselves don't see that she represents what the majority of them look like. There's a very big chance that Cleopatra had Egyptian blood mixed in. I never saw an Egyptian person fighting with a Greek person on the race or color of Cleopatra. I see that in my comments in my other video. The Greek family, they're coming in, they're like, hey, you know what? She is just as Egyptian as she is Greek. We are civilized nations, you know, we have always been willing to share Cleopatra. A lot of people in the comments are coming and telling me that I am an Arab. I am an Arab invader and I'm not a real Egyptian. Well, let me tell you something. You have some nerve, you know, You're calling me an outsider and trying to teach me about my history. A girl that was born and raised in between all of this great civilization and all of these temples, going to museums since I was five. Have you ever been to a museum in your life? I bet they never opened the history book in their lives. History is all around us. We're raised with it. We learn about it from everywhere, you know, from shows, from TV. We're taught about it in schools or like in first grade. It's our history and nobody has the right to talk about it except for us, the true Egyptian pharaohs of today. The idea that Africa is a one black man's land, a lot of these ignorant comments commenting that like, what, newsflash, you're in Africa and Africa is the black land, so you're black. No, there are so many different indigenous groups of people in Africa that are so unique and so different from each other. Some of them are lighter skinned, like the ones in the North Africa. We, all of North Africans can agree on this. We do not deny our Africanness and we consider ourselves just as African as the Africans in the West and the center of Africa. And do you even know how large Africa is? Let me just tell you how large Africa is. If the distance between Central Africa and Egypt is the same distance between Egypt and Oslo in Norway. I really want to talk in depth more about the part where they say the current uh, Egyptians are not the real Egyptians. They're not the real pharaoh. When I say they, I'm talking about Afrocentric ideology like um, believers. 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 Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna show you a video to prove to you that Egyptians are indigenous to their land. Egyptians are not black, they are not white, they are not aliens, they are indigenous to their homelands and come in all shades and colors. A recent paper published in 2021 gives us the clearest insight into the genetic history of the Egyptians. At its roots, the Egyptian genome is comprised of an indigenous North African core dating back more than 30,000 years. Around 10,000 years ago, we see the input of Natufian-related ancestry, which came from the first people who discovered farming in the Levant. Around 5,000 years ago, there was additional admixture from the Middle East, except this time characterized by the introduction of Mesopotamian groups who brought a component of their DNA into the region. Upon the unification of both Upper and Lower Egypt, a component known as Mota was introduced, today found high within Cushitic and Amotic groups of Africa. And finally, during the late Bronze Age to late antiquity, various small influxes of people from the Mediterranean, Maghreb and West Asia settled in the Nile Delta. The Egyptians, including both Christian Copts and Arabic-speaking Muslims, are the true descendants of the ancient Egyptians who once ruled the fertile plains of the Nile River Valley. 
The appropriation of Egyptian culture by both political, cultural and ideological movements atrophies the identity of 104 million people who have ties to the greatest civilization to have ever sprung up in the history of man. Rather than fetishizing Egyptian culture as being alien and mysterious, let us be thankful and acknowledge the modern people of Mess, whose history and cultural contributions live on through their people with each and every breath. The argument that North Africans are light-skinned because they were invaded is not right. Think about it like this, right? All of Africa was invaded, very heavily invaded by Europeans, by English, by French. We don't see any other people turning light-skinned uh, magically. Christians were always like this since the beginning of time. Yes, the Arabs invaded us. They came, they spread their religion, politics, they spread their language. A lot of people converted to Islam, but the people that remained Coptic are still using the ancient Egyptian language in churches today to pray with it. Arabic that we're speaking is actually called Egyptian Arabic and it's very, very different than the official Arabic language. There has never been a genocide in Egypt. When people come to Egypt and they conquer, they rule over the country and that's it. And usually when people conquer a country, you don't see them mixing that much. They don't marry each other, uh, breed with each other because they see this conquered people as a, an inferior people because they defeated them. So when the Arabs invaded us, no, we did not magically turn Arabic. No, the indigenous people of Egypt, they did not magically disappear and become replaced by Arabs and Persians. Ancient Egypt was home to some of the largest metropolitan Metropolitan cities the world has ever known. Much like New York today, these cities were very heavily populated, with populations that range from 5 to 7 million people. People that came from the Arabs were just like maybe a few thousand. So saying that we were black and we became white because of the invaders, like saying you put a drop of white paint in an ocean of black paint and made it white. Can you imagine that? Studies that are done on modern Egyptian DNA has shown that we have from 80 to 90 percent of the same DNA that ancient Egyptians had, only around from 8 to 20 percent mixed with other genes from other people. That includes Arab, Greek, Persian, and Assyrian, also Sub Saharan. And like I said before in another video, modern Egyptians actually have more Sub Saharan DNA than their ancestors thousands and thousands of years ago and this happened actually during the Arab invasion where it opened the slave trade routes that connected the sub-Saharan part of Africa with North Africa. Egyptians always came in so many different colors and winning. A lot of these poetries and these writings say that the Egyptian people, people of the sun, okay, Egyptian people have a lighter skin tone and they're exposed to the sun, they can become very dark. Skin tone depends on how much sun they get. So you can see that in the royal families, the people that don't work the fields and they were shaded all the time, they always had a much lighter skin tone than the people that were working all day in the fields. Skin tones are ever changing. Like we can go from white to very, very dark in a couple of days just by sitting in the sun all day. So the claim that Nubians built the pyramids was wrong and let me show you why. Nubia has always had their own unique culture and heritage. Yes, we influence each other but there are very very distinct differences between Egyptian history and art and Nubian history. Okay, and you can see that in a lot of the art pieces. So a lot of these Afrocentrics are using the Kingdom of Kush as their main argument that Egyptians were black. The 25th dynasty or the black pharaohs or the Kushites, the uh, land of Kushites, which is modern day Sudan and Nubia. Okay, they were a Nubian empire and they invaded Egypt and they ruled over Egypt for 91 years. 147 BC, 646 BC. Now, and that's where it gets interesting. The first pyramid was built between the years of 2630 BC, 2610, and I know this might be common sense, but I just need to clarify because some of these people, this is how the BC years work, so basically 700 
newer than 2000 okay because we're counting down like from so zero is like the closest to our time and going from zero backwards in time okay just had to clarify because some of these people look like they did not go to school black pharaohs came to egypt and the egyptian pyramids were already there that's what influenced them to go back and build their nubian pyramids in sudan okay the kushites make up 91 years out of 10,000 years heritage and history okay and while we did intermarry and interbreed they did not really affect our genes that much you know like i showed you in the video again this is between nubia and egypt who brought blacks in the mix and by blacks i mean african americans in america who do not have any connection to the egyptians or the blacks in egypt or in nubia i heard a lot of nubians coming on my comment section and be like we don't want them to represent our culture either yeah there was black pharaohs and stuff it's still not them can't claim our culture as theirs anyways so basically african americans in the states are in no way related not genetically and not culturally to the nubians or the blacks in egypt or close to egypt in any way as we all know the african americans most of them come from central and west africa places like congo and the sub-saharans and like i demonstrated before are very 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 far in distance from North Africa. So now how to make it right. There's two options to make this right with the Egyptian people. The first option is to actually make a historically correct documentary that represents our people in the right way. And that means you need to have an Egyptologist on board. You need to have an archeologist on board. Queen Cleopatra, of course, she has to be represented with a Mediterranean looking girl, strong opinionated queen with a, with a presence, okay? She needs to look Mediterranean. If you cast a Greek girl, the Egyptians won't mind. If you cast an Egyptian girl, the Greeks won't mind, you know? Uh, anything that looks close to both of our, of our people would be okay. You know, cast a bunch of Egyptians, put up and represent some of the darker people in Egypt as well. At least Egyptian looking cast, you know, with the variety of the Egyptian colors that I mentioned and talked about, which range from all the colors basically, but the majority is like a brown color. How many Egyptians live in North America? Let's Google this, okay? Uh, number of uh, Egyptian Ooh, okay, there's an estimated 256,000 Egyptians living in North America and you couldn't cast a single one of them. Shame on you. Cast some American Egyptians, cast some Egyptian Egyptian stars, some very talented Egyptian uh, actors and actresses as well. And here's a portrayal of Cleopatra in an Egyptian movie by beautiful Egyptian actress Asma Galen um i think she did a really good job on it option number two is to list this as a fantasy list it as a reimagined ancient egypt a fantasy nobody's gonna talk about it okay that's it so actually will smith was invited by zahi hawad very known egyptologist they met i think in um like an awards ceremony for like 50 most influential people or something like that will smith told dr zahi that he's very interested in egypt and the egyptian history and zahi invited him he came in 2017 with his family he visited egypt was personally taken on all of these tours for for the heritage site and everything by Dr. Zahi Hawass who gave him a lot of lessons on Egypt's culture and Egypt history. Everybody was tweeting, everybody was so happy to have Will Smith and his family in Egypt. You know, they love Will Smith. He, Will Smith himself tweeted that this is one of the most beautiful experiences he's ever had. Him to go and stab us in the back like this. And I know why he did it. Let me tell you why he did it. So I know my Egyptian people, right? We are some of the most welcoming and social people on this planet. And if you've been to Egypt, you know this. I'm pretty sure that when they saw Will Smith, they were like, hey, Africa, we're all African, you know, and probably he compared himself 
his skin color with a few of these Egyptians probably saying all these nice things to him that made him feel like people are really nice they agree that we're the same color they agree that we're both from Africa and we're all Africa so maybe I could just go and steal all of their heritage and claim it as my own and go ahead and teach my children that this is their history making a bunch of new enemies that I never had before and raising some ignorant little racist people that are gonna grow up and piss a whole bunch of people off ultimately increasing the hate you know humans tend to generalize as a result just reinforcing the victim mentality which is just acting like a self um a self what it's going in circles self self-fulfilling prophecy i got it going in cycles going in circles with yourself feeling like you're victimized so going ahead and pissing more people off and then feeling like the victim again again and again and again in circles in me as as nora like i am very very sympathetic or like i've i've always felt very sad about what happened to uh african americans and their uh their painful history it really pains my heart that this happened like this is the worst human crime to ever occur in the history of the world humans that have been through something like that even if it's not them but their ancestors i feel like they would develop like lifelong trauma that they really need to heal from so i feel like instead of going ahead and making a bunch of new enemies by doing things like appropriating other people's cultures um, taking revenge on the world basically they could focus on actually improving and healing and building so that future generations will have more things to be proud of and they already have a lot of things to be proud of a lot of accomplishments that you guys made in the past couple of decades uh to be very proud of and to make movies about and series about and shows about and also i do want to apologize for generalizing a little bit in my first video i did generalize it was just all that anger that made me like just talk to all of african americans instead of only the afrocentric group that was actually wrong it really made me feel like no i should really come up here talk to my egyptian family right now and try to tell them that this is not all of african americans so that was all I had to say on the topic. Thank you so much for listening and I really hope that you guys learned something from me today. If you know anyone that believes in this nonsense, please send them my video and try to educate them. Um, and yeah, that's it. I just want to tell you guys what's coming next. What's coming next is a video that's going to debunk every single Afrocentric theory okay drop the mic so freaking hard is gonna drop the mic from 12 story high building on these afrocentric ideologies it's gonna be the video that you show people to make them change their minds you know like you know that it's, it's just like education like i'm taking my time studying the the facts teaming up with a bunch of professionals that are going to give me professional fact-based scientific and historical information because i don't want to say i don't want to give you guys some false information or like these afrocentric some information based on quotes from the bible or based on like quotes from books that nobody even heard about you know i'm gonna give you some hard facts so you can really see that this ideology is just some bullshit you know uh thank you so much for watching and thank you so much for all your support really please share what you think of this video in the comments i love hearing all your comments and please subscribe to stay tuned to all of my coming videos bye it's colon 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 you can see that i'm not american colon colon damn it